Happy New Year and welcome to The Property Show, your trusted voice in the real estate sector. We close 2022 with a ray of hope in this sector, with the affordable housing program taking off, friendly mortgage products and stress-free building solutions now available in the market. This trend is expected to continue in 2023, bringing endless opportunities across the real estate sector. We start the year with a snapshot on the housing market and trends expected in 2023. A mind-opening conversation indeed. Post-COVID, quite a good pickup. Interestingly, the sectors that were most adversely affected, the food and beverage and retail sectors and the hotel sectors, picked up the most quickly post-COVID. The property pick of the week basket highlights a collection of hand-picked projects and plots ideal for family homes as well as investments with sound returns. Progress on our ongoing upscale homes Tanky Budget Solution Project. Our decorating corner shares furniture pieces ideal to transform our spaces. The home ownership front shares interesting experiences from those who have walked the journey. Getting the right people was one of the challenges. Another thing that I didn't really think much of is the terrain of the land. Let's continue interacting on our digital platforms, our diaspora desk, is open too. Happy New Year and enjoy the show. As always, there is something for everyone. The property pick of the week basket brings a collection of hand-picked projects and plots in different neighborhoods, ideal for family homes as well as investments with good returns. We kick off with Crystal Rivers, a project located in Ati River, away from the daily hustle and bustle of the city. 30 minutes drive from CBD through the expressway. 10 minutes drive to the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. 20 minutes drive to the SGR. And guess what? Six hours away to the beach. What can beat that? This gated community has been dubbed as the future of fine living and comes with all amenities required in a quality secure modern home, including manicured gardens, children's play area, internet connectivity, borehole water, solar, DSQ with external access, CCTV and 24 hour security, biodigester, swimming pool and ample parking. The icing on the cake is the acreage. This project is built on 17 acres, offering a bouquet of high-spec quality units of three-bedroom apartments, three- and four-bedroom townhouses. Another winning aspect of this project is the neighborhood mall and the just-opened kindergarten, a school grounded in excellent values, integrating Montessori, Kenyan curriculum, and an international early education system. This project has a few units available for sale. Let's check it out.
Live, work and play is what defines Crystal Rivers, a mixed-use development located off Mombasa Road in Athi River. This exquisite development offers apartments and townhouses on residential and a mall for commercial purposes all on a 17-acre piece of land. The accommodation features include a spacious living area, a dining area, a spacious kitchen fitted with cabinets and a pantry area, adobe area, a common cloakroom, a private lounge area, a barbecue area in the townhouses and a DSQ for the townhouses. There's so much more to life at Crystal Rivers Residences. Offering you a bouquet of three-bedroomed apartments or three-bedroomed and four-bedroom townhouses with numerous amenities so you can work, play, live and discover. Making every moment count. From the precious me time to creating memories with your loved ones. Embrace it. Live it. Welcome to your new home. project ideal for a family home as well as investments with sound returns takes us to 265 Elma 1. This project is located in the heart of Kasarani, uniquely designed to provide comfort with serene architecture, offering a wide variety of units to pick from, including studios, standard units, one bedroom, duplex and two bedroom apartments. This project is underpinned by high quality finishes, top of the line social amenities, and a true sense of comfort. Sixty-five Elma One is a gated community comprising of 284 units with a typology mix of studio apartments, one-bedroom apartments, one-bedroom loft apartments, and two-bedroom apartments located in Kasarani. The development is approximately 20 minutes drive to CBD, 10 minutes drive to Thika Road Mall, 20 minutes drive to Garden City Mall, and 10 minutes drive to Moy International Sports Center. 265 Elma 1 will be a differentiated high quality product compared to the existing stock in the area, making it highly competitive in the rental market, resulting in high and sustainable occupancy in the development. This product is ideal for investors looking for high yield returns in a well-coordinated and affordable built environment. Accommodation features, spacious living area, large dining room, kitchen with cabinets, large windows, laundry area, spacious rooms, balcony, shared amenities, 24-hour manned gate security with CCTV surveillance, internet provision, swimming pool, upgraded internal drainage system, coordinated landscaping for greenery, backup power generator, ample water supply, ample parking spaces, rooftop lounge or garden for entertainment, mobility friendly development with wheelchair access and a combination of lifts and staircases. The price is from 2.5 million Kenya shillings. Project takes us to a stunning development located in Kitengela along Nairobi Namanga Highway, Royal Gates Estate. This project comes with extravagant finishes, offering four bedroom townhouses with spacious rooms, a fully fitted kitchen, family room, detached DSQ, 
private gardens and two parking slots per unit. Royal Gates Estate is surrounded by all major amenities ideal for a modern family. And if you're looking to buy a project with flexible payment terms, this is the place for you. Take a look. Royal Gates is a gated community located in Acacia, four kilometers from Kitangela town. This development consists of 78 four-bedroom detached townhouses. Amenities include a spacious lounge with a separate dining area, modern kitchen fitted with quality appliances and ample storage space, master ensuite bedroom with inbuilt wardrobes and a bathtub, an ensuite guest bedroom, two additional bedrooms with a common bathroom, internet ready as well as a centralized TV port. Other features include detached ensuite DSQ with ample wash area, two parking slots per house, a swimming pool, a fully equipped gym, boho and wastewater recycling system, private gardens, children's playground, CCTV cameras, electric fence and perimeter walls for security, street lighting, solar power and cabra paved driveway. Three Apartments is up next. This project is strategically located off Mombasa Road in the Siokimao neighborhood with scenic views of Nairobi National Park. Apple Tree Apartments comes with different unit options from affordable units to luxurious duplexes. It also comes with all amenities ideal for a modern family. Another highlight on Apple Tree Apartments is the projection of six to 7% return on investment annually. Let's hear more. Apple Tree Apartments, situated off Mombasa Road, right by the Nairobi National Park, just five minutes from the SGR station. Apple Tree Apartments are the true definition of serenity, with exquisite views of the flora and fauna and wildlife right from your balcony. The project offers two, three, four and five bedroom apartments with a host of amenities. Accommodation features open style living and dining area, balcony, fully fitted kitchen with oven and cooker, washing area, detached servants quarter, master ensuite bedroom, common cloakroom, beautiful finishes, common shared amenities, 24 hour manned gate security with CCTV, fingerprint and passcode, ample parking, beautiful landscaping, kids playing area, heated swimming pool, backup generators, high-speed elevators, community shopping center, restaurant, shops, and laundry butler service. Next, hand-picked plots ideal for building a dream home.
If you're looking for an ideal plot to build a dream home or an investment with good returns in Ongata Rongai neighborhood, Savannah Estate Park is the place for you. These plots have all weather road infrastructure, water, electricity, plus contemporary architectural designs to jumpstart your home ownership dream. Savannah Park Rongai is located in the outskirts of Ongata Rongai town, which is one of the satellite towns 10 kilometers northwest of Nairobi city. The property is near the road linking Ongata Rongai, Nazarene University and the new SGR station. The road from the SGR to Savannah Park is graded to Maram standard and is just a five minute drive to the entrance gate. Savannah Park Rongai has 200 plots located one kilometer from the new Rongai Kisarian SGR railway station and three kilometers from Nazarene University. The plots are suitable for residential homes due to the close proximity to the famous Brimpa Conservancy. They also offer a beautiful view of Gong Hills. The plots are fully serviced with piped water, a borehole and electricity on site. Each individual plot is fenced after payment is complete. The site and service land scheme also has a plan of three and four bedroom missionettes with a team of professionals to help jumpstart your home ownership journey. This comes at a separate fee. online Zaria village tucked in the vast neighborhood of Kiambu County. Infrastructure within the development is 80% complete. This gated and controlled development assures every family of round-the-clock security and what makes it a winner is the proximity to all social amenities. Let's take a look. The Zaria village is a pristine gated community set in the heart of the evergreen Kiambu County. This family-oriented community with a controlled development is offering 331 quarter-acre fully serviced plots on a 120-acre piece of land. This master plan development is only 25 kilometers from the central business district off the Roiro Kiambu Bypass near Tatu City. The Zaria village is subdivided into three distinct zones as follows. The Zaria Green Gem. These gem plots are located close to the main entrance and encompass shared recreational space of the clubhouse. Price point, 8.4 million Kenya shillings. The Zaria Grey Pearl. These serene plots are located at the back of the development with stunning views of Mukoyo Forest. Price point, 8.5 million Kenya shillings. And lastly, the Zaria Golden Rod. These plots are enclosed in a horseshoe shape at the heart of the project and are home to heights and great views of the Nairobi skyline. Price point, 8.6 million Kenya shillings. Potential homeowners will have four approved architectural house concepts. The house typologies come with option of conventional or contemporary roofing. The designs are Zara, Zazi, Zaira and Zayana or four bedroom ensuite with a DSQ. Amenities in each plot include electricity, water, and internet reticulation. The shared amenities at Zaria Village include well-designed stone perimeter wall with electric fence, internal cabrio roads, state-of-the-art main gate with security system, electricity and sufficient water supply, 
solar street lighting, jogging track, recreational areas by the river and by Lake Zad, clubhouse with restaurant, bar, gym and rooftop, 25 meter swimming pool with a kiddie pool, provision for education center and provision for a mini shopping complex. The Zaria village is designed to inculcate the concept of a strong and attractive community. Our desire is to ensure that one has pride in ownership and peace of mind that comes with the comfort of owning your home in a Zen place. Zaria Village, dream it, own it, and live it. Next, progress on our ongoing upscale homes, Tanki budget solution. I must say, we are on the finishing line on this project. Currently, we are finalizing on the interior finishes, the tile works, cabinetry, wardrobes, internal doors, paintworks, and landscaping. The final leg takes us to window glazing, as well as the installation of the cabros on the driveway. And voila, in a few weeks, the house will be ready for occupation. Upscale Homes Tanky Budget Service is a solution for plot owners looking to build a dream home. We take all the construction hassle off your shoulders and make the journey seamless and stress-free. We have ready architectural designs to choose from, a construction consortium team, we also manage all the approvals required when building a house. The day-to-day -day procurement of materials, supervision of the construction site and the fundis, plus interior design ideas. And when it comes to construction finance, our financial partners fill that gap. And guess what? Within no time, the dream home becomes a reality. And if you don't have a plot and are looking for one, we have a portfolio of plots in different neighborhoods and price range. We are happy to steer you in the right direction. Just give us a call and let's kickstart the journey of turning a plot into an asset together. We are taking a short commercial break. Still ahead, a snapshot on the housing market and trends expected in 2023. The e commerce is something that's not new in markets like Europe and Dubai or the States, but here it's still pretty new. So there's a lot of space left in that kind of e commerce logistic. Our decorating corner with furniture pieces ideal to transform a home. The home ownership front shares interesting experiences from those who have walked the journey. What I would advise anybody who is looking to buy a house, just work with professionals. continue interacting on our digital platforms our diaspora desk is open too don't touch that dial the property show will be right back after the break welcome back you're watching the property show your trusted voice in the real estate sector coming up a snapshot on the housing market and trends expected in 2023. A mind-opening conversation indeed. Let's listen in.
Today's property market has evolved with notable changes in different sectors. Next, the outlook and emerging trends expected in 2023. Karibu sana on the show. Asante. Give us a snapshot of the real estate sector, where we are, where we are coming from, and how you see it evolve coming next year. Sure. So it's been an interesting year for Kenya. COVID globally had a big impact on the real estate sector, particularly in the retail and hospitality, food and beverage space. I think what's emerged out of that has been um, e-commerce, has been pushed forward a few years. I think COVID helped progress that sector and that obviously has had a knock-on effect into industrial, logistics, um, and, and even a couple of other aspects of, of the real estate space. We saw post-COVID quite a good pickup Interestingly, the sectors that were most adversely affected, the food and beverage and retail sectors and the hotel sectors, picked up the most quickly post-COVID. Um, however, unfortunately for us, we had an election cycle this year, so we didn't get to ride that wave quite as much as we would have liked. And then that's been coupled with obviously the global headwinds that, that everybody's facing in terms of interest rates and the crisis in Europe. So we started to pick up quite strongly. We then tapered off a little bit during the elections um, and now we've started to pick up again, but not quite as uh, bullish a market as we probably would have liked to have seen um, due to the kind of global, the global climate. After the elections, we've now got results, we are over. Do we have any prospective investors calling in and how are they taking our new government and where we are going? It's a good question. I think there's very much two schools of thought. There's the... Um, the investors from overseas who are looking at uh, Kenya and saying we maybe want to wait and see what this government looks like, whether or not they walk the talk, because they're certainly talking the talk. I was in Dubai last week, I met a few um, global firms who said, wow, positive election cycle, you've got a young president who is pro-business, this is all very exciting, we like it. And we had others who were saying, yeah, look, it sounds great, but there's a bit of an unknown there, let's, let's wait and see what happens. But I'll caveat that by saying that the, the firms that are looking longer term at investing in Kenya as a hub for Africa particularly are, uh, are moving ahead. So, you know, they appreciate that presidents come and go, governments come and go. If they're looking 30, 40, 50 years down the road, they don't really mind so much. And what's your take on the country going forward economically? Look, again, uh, I think it's exciting times with a pro-business uh, leader in, in, in the State House. Um, if again he does truly walk the talk, uh, we're going to we're going to be in for for an exciting few years ahead. I think economically we're well positioned. We're a diversified economy. You know we're not um, reliant on a single commodity, for example. We are fortunate that a lot of our counterparts across the continent are struggling politically, economically. Um, I think we're also fortunate geographically that we're in such a good location to cover the continent. The quality of life in Nairobi is very good, so a lot of expatriates want to be here. Um, we're a pretty free market. So, yeah, I think that the medium to long term prospects are, are really good. It's the, it's the shorter term with what's going on um, in the global economy that's going to be a little bit harder, I think. And how are you seeing the real estate sector, uh, the commercial, the residential, the retail, the logistics? and other emerging markets. How do you see that play during this time? Good question. I mean, we as Nairobi are quite mature from a lot of real estate asset classes perspectives. So, you know, we have hotels, we have shopping malls, we have office, we have residential, it's pretty strong. I think some of the gaps are, you know, everybody talks about affordable housing, but one thing having spent time in more developed markets is the is the logistics piece and the light industrial. I think there's a, a you know, and this is something that we're seeing up in Tatu and Talisi, there's a lot of interest in some of the um, economic zones that are coming up. There's now a, a realization that we need to be more self-sufficient from a food perspective. We can't just grow food and then ship it overseas or it goes bad. We need to have the ability to store that food. So cold storage facilities, um, like I mentioned earlier, e-commerce is something that's not new in markets like Europe and Dubai or the States, but here it's still pretty new. So there's a lot of space left in that kind of e-commerce logistics um, area. So 
you know, I think those are quite important. The other one that I'm very excited about is, is the agri space, particularly because we are an agricultural economy and there are some very commercial agricultural outfits out there, but I, I still believe that there's more that can be done, particularly around the sustainability piece, you know, the, the carbon off, offsetting, carbon footprint interest that a lot of foreign firms and funds have. So there's more and more interest from the West, let's say, and even from Asia, looking at Africa as a way to invest um, in a socially responsible way, in a green way. Um, and I think that given the, the level of sophistication in our market, we have the ability or the opportunity, let's say, the opportunity to economize on that. And how do you see the retail market play out? It's a good question. I think, you know, I can say the same thing for, for office and retail to an extent is that we built a lot of offices and a lot of retail and, and, and to be fair, a lot of hotels and a lot of residential off spec. You know, developers said there's a lack of hotels, there's a lack of office, let's just build one. They didn't really think about how, they, how it needs to look, what the international occupiers are looking for, what international retailers are looking for, what consumers, you know, want to see these these a lot of these properties were well, going back 10 15 years weren't particularly well planned or thought out the studies weren't necessarily done to understand the, you know who's interested in, in coming to this property particularly in the retail space that now either people themselves have been burnt or they've seen other others be burnt by this and so now we're seeing investors say actually let's take a step back let's plan this well and so the grade B retail and office I think is going to going to struggle um, going forward as, as better quality retail and office opens. Retail is very diverse. I mean, retail is such a wide, I mean, you've got the, the CBD retail, which is very successful, um, continues to, to do well. I mean, the occupancies are very high, ground floor of CBD, uh, rents are good, and the, the local market goes in there. You then have the, the shopping malls, the bigger malls, catering more to the upper class and, and the expatriate communities. The inconvenience of going through security and dealing with paying for parking and stuff has been uh, capitalized upon by the convenience retail strip mall type model that we're now seeing pop up everywhere. Yes. Um, and so there's competition there for the bigger retailers by, you know, not necessarily in the clothing space, but certainly in the convenience shopping um, supermarket space by, you know, why would you spend 10 minutes going through security, paying for parking, walking a long way, when you can just pull over on the side of the, the road next to the petrol station and walk into the supermarket and buy what you need for the week, right? So at the moment, there's this kind of um, interesting shift in, in, in that retail space. I play on the affordable housing space, and I know you play on the luxury space. Just give us a snapshot of how the luxury housing is unfolding and then I can tell you what's happening in the affordable housing space. I'm sure you're a much better position than I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm learning a lot about residential at the moment because I, I come from a commercial real estate background. So the last six months has been a big learning for me in the residential space. Um, I think what's, it's a very interesting time for our residential market for a few reasons. One is this um, conversion to leases from freehold the um, CGT changes, what's going to happen there, you know, are, are we going to see that getting pushed out, aren't we? There's a lot of people who are being held up um, by the lands department that, you know, the transactions aren't going through, what's going to happen to those transactions that are in process that, that haven't gone through yet in the new year. Um, however, there are more and more expatriates here who are, who are kind of viewing Nairobi as a longer term home and are thinking, well, maybe I can buy somewhere to, to rent. And they are depending on where they come from, a lot of them are more at ease with the idea of a leasehold property, buying as an investment. You know, traditionally we were much more in line with the UK where we would buy a freehold property and we'd own it and that would be our house forever. Um, you know, and we'd want to get on the property ladder. But the other big um, piece to this whole thing is the mortgage market, right? I think that's the, and with interest rates going where they're going, um, you know, I don't think it's an easy nut to crack at the moment. Let me add on it and say that when we look at the affordable housing space, one, right now we have a lot of stock, and so that is good for us. And secondly, with the KMRC mortgage product, that is a single digit mortgage product that is available, we are finding a very good uptake. But more importantly, we are finding, and I was talking to your colleagues, that 
a lot of Kenyans do not buy houses through a mortgage. So when you see our mortgage uptake very low, it's not that people are not buying property. It's because people have other instruments they can use to get money where you can use your circle, you can use your personal loan, you can use your savings, and people are tending to go more to that direction. And we've also seen rent to own also going up. So my take on the affordable housing space is it's great. We have very good portfolio, very good stock. It's the future. Next year, I see it play out very, very wide and going across the country. And as you said, we have a, a pro-business government, so it's going to open other pockets and other people will be able to own these homes. Next, our decorating corner with furniture pieces ideal to transform our spaces. Creating an elegant ambience in your living space with furniture pieces and house accessories. It's incredible how easily furniture pieces and accessories can redefine living spaces and create comfortable and elegant ambiences. Some of the ways you can achieve this include selecting tasteful functional designs for your lounge sets that best match the size of space while comfortably catering for numbers. Try smooth and minimalist designs with soft transitions to achieve a warm and elegant living space. Utilize the impact of detail to bring in personal style through color plays on sofa sets, cushions, walls and accessories. Use colored sofa sets or walls to add character to a space. Gold sofa sets make an elegant statement due to the association with royalty, but be sure to pick the right shade for your space. For cushions, introduce color and interplay it with varied arrangement styles. For instance, try overlapping same or contrasting colored cushions to create cozy artistic visuals. To add the extra comfort, invest in sofa throw blankets. These vary in design, texture, color and add a great visual. You can have one or several throws to cater for each sofa. For accessories, switch it up with lighting fixtures that add personality while stand out as statement pieces. Diversify this space with functional pieces like flower vases. Finally, just because you have a sofa lounge set doesn't mean that you cannot add a few extra furniture pieces. Add complimentary armchairs or rocking chairs to cater for extra guests or allow you to have a personal cozy area. These come in varying designs and are fast becoming must-have pieces. Whether looking to upgrade your space on a budget or looking to furnish a new space, our decorating corner has got you covered. We have in-house interior decorators who are tried and tested on turning homes into little heavens. A home is that special place where we create memories and find comfort with family and friends. Next, the home ownership front with interesting experiences from those who have walked that journey. What are the main challenges have you faced through this journey? So I think my journey began with, with another home that I had bought somewhere else that I paid a deposit for that I was so excited to, to move in uh, into. And uh, that didn't work out. So that was one of the hu huge challenges for me because I've not, even up to now, I've never been able to recover the deposit. So I think in terms of home, home ownership is doing your due diligence and knowing 
who are the right people to work with. I don't know what I would have done differently, but I really just felt that uh, that was a major setback for me. But uh, luckily when I came to this other transaction, it worked well. Actually, there was a hitch in that after I paid the deposit, the bank that was financing me went into receivership. But thanks be to God, I was already working somewhere else, so I was able to, 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 to pay it off. So that has been my, my journey full of ups and downs. And you know, I always say being alone and making such huge decisions is also frightening. I used to sleep at night and think, what? Those are huge amounts of money to, to, to take as a mortgage, but I thank God that I was able to do it. What is the mm. one thing you love in this home? What I love most about this home is, is just the community, that we're in an enclosed, gated community, so we have neighbours. You have your own compound, where of course I can sit in the garden. My son and I can have our own space and, and do whatever we want to, to do, because the house has lots and lots of space. I love the high ceilings, I love the large windows. It's just a beautiful space that's just enough for me and my, and my baby. This met the dream that I had for my own home. And the kitchen, the bedrooms, my, the master bedroom is beautiful. So I think it met everything that I was looking for in a home. Yeah. Going back to the house that you are buying that has not completed to date, yes. and you haven't received your refund for the deposit. Mm -hmm. So many people today have also started that journey and yes. they're in that space. Yes. Is it that you didn't use professionals? Is it that you didn't do your due diligence? What could have gone wrong? I think we were just excited and, and in the place I was working a lot of us wanted to buy a house in that specific place so all of us are still are stuck in that many. We didn't do our due diligence. In fact, I remember taking the, the, the lease agreement, the sale agreement, now years later to a lawyer and saying you, you didn't even do a, a lease agreement with the developer. We did a sale agreement with an individual, one of the individuals. I think I did it in a hurry. I didn't seek legal advice. I didn't do my due diligence. What I would advise anybody who is looking to buy a house, just work with professionals and people who are just have a good reputation and you can look back at something, at the history and see what they have achieved. Before. A lot of people mm. think that working with professionals is too expensive. And I've always said, cheap is more yeah, expensive. True, true. Yeah. That is so true. That is so true. I learned, I learned that the hard way. So just work with professionals and you, you, I mean, you pay a little more, but you get value for value and security. It all boils down to starting where you are, doing your research, and most importantly, always working with professionals. They lift the burden of being caught off your shoulders. What was your story when getting onto the property ladder? Come on board, share and inspire the next homeowners. Let me say, from where we sit, 2023 brings a ray of hope in this sector, especially with the takeoff on the affordable housing program, friendly mortgage products, stress-free building solutions, you name it, we've got it. And this trend is expected to continue bringing endless opportunities across the real estate sector. That's it for today and thank you for watching The Property Show. My shoot location is our Property Show and Fast Avenue offices. Let's continue interacting on our digital platforms. Our diaspora desk is open too. Happy New Year. As always, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri. Bye.